Srikant, should we lose him again? So you're on mute. Because yeah, yeah. You're on mute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. So he's going to connect his AirPods, I think. So when you plug in a new device, then I think Zoom disconnects. So he'll be joining. Okay. Yeah, here, here he comes. Perfect. No, audio is not connected. Perfect. I'm back. Perfect. Sounds okay. good. So it is 11 or 1. We will, yeah, we'll give it right. one more minute. So I see about 55, 56 uh, attendees right now. So we'll give it one more minute and then we'll start. I just saw your airport. I'm like, why I'm not using mine? Uh, I thought <laughs> you heard him well. That's why uh, when I could to hear well, I right, could right. hear them too. Wonderful. Yeah, they, they are they're great. They, I mean, they work great for uh, such kind of webinars and all. And I'm also using this Yeti uh, microphone. So I'll be switching between these two. So audio, I'm hearing from airports and the mic is this one. Ah, Yeti, yeah. But you can hear me fine, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Perfect. Yes, no all right. Yeah. That was my worry only, the microphone actually. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's get Please. start. Um, start. Hold on. Yeah. Shall we start? Start. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, please. So I see about uh, 62 participants, 63 participants, but we'll get going. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from wherever you are joining in. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Leadership Talk uh, organized by Elite CISO, and it is going to be delivered by Dr. Erdem. So I will just take one minute and introduce you a couple of things about Elite CISO. And before we do that, uh, if you see this map, so uh, Dr. Erdal is famous around the world and we, we used to get international attendees in the previous uh, events as well that we used to do. But this time we have got attendees from all over the world, right? So we have got obviously people from India. Uh, we have people from registering from USA, Canada, uh, Turkey, uh, Finland, UK, uh, Congo, Australia and New Zealand as well. So can you type in the chat if somebody is from outside India? I just want to see that people are not just registering, but they are attending as well. So can you type in chat if you are from outside India? I am. Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. I just want to get a smile in your yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Great. Perfect. So from Hong Kong, Mr. Jimmy Beautiful. is there. That's wonderful. I see Dan as well. So he's he registered from US, but uh, let's see. Great, great, great. So what we'll do is, okay. Now I wanted to bring your attention to something called the podcast that we do. So last week we started with a podcast format where two CISOs are going to talk about a cybersecurity concept. And we spoke with Mr. Uh, Venkata Satish, he is also in the webinar today. And we talked about the email security. Now, this is a new idea that we, we, we were developing. And in the 25 minute of podcast for initial seven minutes, we just kept talking about the Black Hat Conference in US. Because we are so passionate about it, we love going over there. Uh, but again, once we publish the, the uh, you know, the feedback came that, okay, you are talking too much about the uh, Black Hat, so cut down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a short intro of only one minute about Elite CISO. So if you talk about Elite CISO, and my time starts now, okay? And the audio or the site is, Rishi, you can still hear me, right? Okay, no yes, Vikas. Yes, yeah. Vikas. <laughs> that's why people say, don't do a live demo. The site is not loading right now. Okay, great. So Elite CISO is all about uh, bringing community together, building a platform where CISOs can talk to each other and, uh, you know, interact and share about the ideas. Okay, here it loads. So it is for CISOs and by CISOs. We do a lot of activities like uh, trainings that we do and a lot of webinars and leadership talk that we arrange. So if you go to the website over here in the past events, you will find recording of all the uh, previous events. If you go to about us and if you see there are two main objectives that the community drives. So the objective is 
build community of cyber security leaders to drive collaboration and knowledge sharing so knowledge sharing is prime focus or prime focus of elite ciso now once you talk about knowledge sharing there is nobody better than dr ardal who demonstrated uh, who has been demonstrating from past many years in terms of sharing knowledge around cyber security right if you look his portfolio he is currently ciso for standard chartered bank uh, he has been a lecturer uh, for charles sturts university uh, he is a board of he is a advisor for board of uh, directors and all so all in all i mean a great profile out there i don't think there would be any reason you will not connect to dr ardal uh, over linkedin so go ahead follow him uh, he shares great insight about cyber security topics and we are delighted to have you dr ardal uh, with us today uh, so over to you sir take it over thank you thanks very much uh, how would you like to do it uh, i prefer to chat instead of me just lecturing if it's okay with you yeah yeah that's uh, fine that's fine can ask, i can answer all right uh, first of all thank you for the introduction it's a pleasure to be here with you um it's you know i always believe building on communities because you know we will speak about leadership lead a leader can be only better with a good network we live in a small community i mean look who i'm saying that i'm saying this to elisi so who is in india who has more than 1 billion people around them or the world 8 billion people right but trust me this cyber security community is small and we are at the moment in a war in a war with bad people uh, i mean um, i understand them they try to gain some financial uh, some financial benefits or they try to harm you or whatever the reason is we in the other side we, we have to protect our customers our reputation our colleagues our data our you, you can you know this our will go to ours right we can speak about it more and more and i only believe we can only be better against this fight to hackers if we unite because we are better together right this will be my opening um, opening uh, thing if you want we can uh, you can ask me question i can answer or if you want i prepare some stuff i can just talk about it no problem i'm easy yeah yeah so uh, we'll we'll go to the stuff but before that as you said ask questions and all that's the good format that we are starting in a podcast as well so talk to us about your experience you know how you got into cyber security what your experience has been and you have traveled around the world so i've seen that australia us and now middle east so uh, talk to us about your experience okay uh, let me start myself uh, arvaloska as you know born by turkish parents in germany <laughs> a bit more complex than that actually in germany grown grew up there and then um, moved for a short time for turkey my dad forced me to learn some turkish and learn my own culture which i believe uh, which i'm thankful for him from there i met my wife uh, who's australian i moved to australia for 16 years and last five years he i'm in dubai so um, this accent comes from there turkish german australian arab you know if you don't understand me i apologize but no, if you listen fine. carefully if you listen carefully you will get it through um i started in, i i mean uh, i think this was published in tentest magazine i'm pretty sure you all read about tentest magazine in their first issue they asked me how did i get into security i'm pretty sure you remember there used to be all james bond back with three digit of pin my brother had one Oh. and I, he had something inside i mean my first hacking was not on computer uh was on this bag i knew he was hiding something and because every time i was i used to come he used to kick me out it took me days if not weeks months i tried every possible combination until i opened the bag oh wow and this this inspired me of course i found some goodies Uh, some game boy whatever i, I leave to your imagination what i find in a teenager's bag so he's telling me he's older than me right. and i was just nine okay but i can assure you this make me very popular in the school because i used to get those stuff to school and show off with me my friends anyway this is long long time they go in germany then i started to you know uh, we had a computer lab i noticed that 
Um, I could just access to other computers while just putting C dollar sign or just remember the old, old, old Windows days. There was even no C, but I'm talking about early Windows 3.1, Windows 95. So, you know, I was always an average student, but I started to top my class out of sudden. Of course, my teachers are not stupid. They noticed that, like, I started to get always very high marks, and they're like, hold on, how? Uh, of course, uh, I was able to find the printer, spooling machine, I was able to get the spool exam questions from the, from the printer, but I never admitted that I was doing that. Of course, I was not the only smart guy. Some other people were called. Anyway, at the end, we made an agreement. Uh, my teacher is my friend at LinkedIn, also at Facebook, we can verify with him, that I'm going to tell them what I do, but I was not going to be in trouble and they were not gonna tell my parents. After that, I was always in computer security. Funny enough, uh, my official study started in Australia. I have two unit degrees, as you know. Uh, then I started my master's. While doing, well, way before that, I was part of, I mean, I think India uh, can be proud of EC Council. I was part of, uh, you know, part of EC Council and right. their board helping them to write the courseware, early CH, which is in a much better situation now. And all the way I done my PhD while working full time in, 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 the, in the market. So this is my little history. Uh, I had my own company in Australia for 12 years. Uh, I started by myself and I moved to Australia. I noticed like, okay, what I'm gonna do here? I started to sell computers build network, uh, you know, back then security was format my computer. <laughs> uh, you got a virus, format my computer, or I have antivirus. I'm pretty sure you all remember the service pack two in Windows XP, right? Uh, which, with the firewall, which was blocking everything. So that helped me to be a step ahead. I was good in Linux as well. I started my own business, as I said, within 12 years, you know, the business which I started by myself ended up with 25 people. It, it was a million dollar turnover business, not profit business, million dollar turnover business, which I sold uh, to one of, the, one of my big competition. And from there, I moved to corporate world. I worked at regional director, then um, CISO at Sikunya. Sikunya or AMT is one of the biggest, or used to be one of the biggest vulnerability research companies. And finally joined Microsoft as a security architect here in Dubai, uh, moved from Australia to here. And uh, then I had this great offer from Standard Chartered Bank, uh, which I joined Standard Chartered Bank. Just to make it very clear today, I'm here as Erva I uh, All my thoughts are mine and I don't reflect neither my previous employees or my current employee, which is Standard Chartered Bank. Wonderful, wonderful, great insights. And talk to us about the books that I see as a virtual background. So since we have written so many books as well, right? Uh, I think I have now the, the books with my name in the cover is I think more than 15 and I have many books which unfortunately my name is not in the cover uh, but right. it's either inside or not even mentioned you will just see your beautiful training vendor right. and while doing masters and you, you said I traveled I think I did visit customers in the five continents mm -hmm. uh, not joking within one week with one week, I was able, uh, I was in Turkey for a whole day to visit my parents. You know, Turkey, unlike Indians, you have to go visit your parents. My parents are back in Turkey, by the way. My brothers are still in Germany. Uh, I had to fly to a customer. I went to Dubai, changed my luggage, then flew to South Africa. This is all within 24 hours. South Africa, I was a customer. Back to Dubai, from there to Las Vegas, to a conference. Uh, actually, I was selected employee of TV by Microsoft. Uh, they call it Platinum Club. From there, I flew to Singapore, visited the customer one day. From there to New Zealand, visit, visit the customer for three days. So within um, nice. five, six days, I was able to visit that five continents, right? Asia, Europe, uh, not six, then it will be six. I mean, not Europe, but um, I traveled all these continents. Uh, nice. What I'm trying to say is, I used to be a very frequent traveler, and right. while traveling, okay, first time when you travel, it's good. Like I was in Hyderabad, India. First time you go, you do the tourist. Of course, 
while you're in India, you go and especially in Hyderabad, you eat your biryani. Uh, or, you know, that second time, third time, what are you going to do? Honestly, I just write books. Uh, and yeah, then that's how a, the books came true. So all the story was related to my books, honestly. That's a wonderful so, idea. That's a wonderful idea because I, I travel a lot. But uh, with the COVID situation, now you're stuck at home. So yeah, that's a great insight how to use time. Wonderful. Um, so uh, doctor, let's go to the slides that you have prepared and uh, let, let's get into that. Okay, I mean, we, we want to talk about cybersecurity leadership, right? So um, I get this question a lot. Before that, I used to be a trusted security advisor, cybersecurity after that, Microsoft. So what should a CISO do? I'm honestly, at the moment, I'm not the glo uh, global CISO. I report, uh, my reporting structure is different, but I'm the regional CISO responsible of many countries, including Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question here is, like, what should a CISO know? How can you be a good cyber leader? Way before you start the contract, first of all, you should have, uh, once you pass the headhunter, this is what happened to me, headhunters usually reach out to you. You should start the conversation between the business leaders and uh, if there is a previous CISO or CIO to understand what the security structure is. Because honestly, if you don't have magic stick, doesn't matter who you are, how many books you have written or what your name is, you can't just go to a organization and fix everything. For example, um, if I become the prime minister of, let's say, India, can I fix everything in one day? I have to build, I have to first understand, of course, uh, by the way, with all my respect to your prime minister, I have no intention, but just give an example, okay? The new prime minister has to understand, first of all, what the current situation is, economically or strategically or uh, ergonomically. You know, the, the, the first 100 days is the learning path. What is in the organization? What roles, I mean, I'm not going to talk about prime minister, I'm going to talk about CISO wise. What roles and responsibilities are there? Are, is everything defined clearly in the contract? Uh, is the board aware of security? I mean, um, previously, in my previous employer, I used to visit, I mean, as you know, I'm a board member of some uh, startups as well, or as an uh, Australian uh, Institute for IT as well. So when I meet these people, they're like, ah, cybersecurity, IT guys issues. Not my issue, I'm like, no, no, no. Cybersecurity is a CEO issue because if something happens, of course you can fire me, but it's not just gonna happen to me. Let's talk about public examples. Equifax, or right, they were fined millions of dollars. Uh, or uh, I think a recent one last year uh, was, I, I wanna talk about big ones, which I know the exact figure, British Airlines. All what they had, a small incident in their Tracking flight numbers, but the fine was close to three hundred million dollars. Please don't judge the exact figures. I'm just giving rough figures. So uh, if if British Airlines paid like ten thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars for each of this customer because it was a small base, it was not going to cost that much. But the fine was way bigger because of GDPR. So who did pay this money? CISO, of course, it was. The CEO, the company was in front of the news. Uh, the regulators were, you know, it, it, a cyber incident will definitely and definitely impact the business. If there is a shareholders in, in front of shareholders, in front of the news. As a result, cyber security is a CEO issue. Then, back to before you start, you have to understand the technology. Uh, yes. Honestly, I have many books. You can see, I, I know Linux, I know dark web, I know, but honestly, in this industry, if there is one thing which I learned, you think you are good until you meet someone else. Because there are so many great minds, and you, as cybersecurity leader, we should know how to network and utilize these great minds to help you to reach your goals. It's like, uh, 
again, I want to give India as an example, because India is a great example, like that huge country, so many different languages, so many different religions, so many different uh, tribes, right? Uh, I think we don't call them tribes, uh, tribes in Africa, but you know exactly what I mean. Uh, but when it comes, for example, uh, to stand up against me, you are an Indian. You, you really don't look at your colors if you Buddhist or Muslim or Christian or one, one of the wonderful many religions that you have in India. You unite as one. So now we have to, or, or Corona, let's, let's talk about COVID. Honestly, uh, does COVID care if you're Indian or Pakistani? I use this example for a reason. Or if you're Turkish or Greek, or if you, you know, uh, Chinese or American. Trump can, Mr. Trump can say that it's a Chinese virus, but uh, yes, maybe it was first seen in China, but it affected the world without any uh, borders, without any, like the virus didn't come to you saying, ah, you're wearing a beautiful Elite t shirt, I'm not going to affect you. No, right? Uh, it changed the world in a different way. So we, humanity, we had to unite, we had to unite in a way that keeping social distance, that India was in lockdown, UAE, or the whole world was in lockdown mode. And uh, we started to put some preventive actions to minimize the effects of the virus. Yes, unfortunately, the virus is still active, but we work as, you know, you cannot be healthy if the people around you, they don't contribute into this. This applies to cyber security as well. Doesn't matter what your role is in the organization. If you're the cleaner, cleaner, yes, or the CIO, or the board, or the owner, if you don't contribute into this, you'll be out of security, let me say. So, uh, these are the pre discussions uh, before we even knew to our first 100 days. Any questions? Because I can talk all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good for now. So one thing is that, okay, it is not IT risk. It's a business risk, right? How do you go to your board and appraise them about the various risks which are there? Or what is your strategy? I mean, what you will tell CISOs to do when they go to business and say, okay, this is what the risk we are facing. And do not, do not say it in terms of IT risk, but as a business risk. What is your recommendation around that? Uh, I mean... I want to highlight three points here. First of all, don't forget, you're not speaking to your colleague. You're not speaking to IT manager or uh, someone. You're, you're speaking to non, most, most, unless you're working in a technology company, most probably to a non um, computer educated people. Uh, one point on this one itself. So when we say they do not understand IT, but what I've seen is it is not always, changing. But most they, of the time, yeah. yeah. They, they read news, they know about ransomware, they know about all the attacks which are happening, they know about the cloud. So they are maybe informed, maybe misinformed. So how do you handle that? So, good question actually. So as long as you know, knowledge is the power, that they for sure, I mean as CEO, a board member, for sure has, has some knowledge. Let me give you an example. I'm pretty sure you all remember when, uh, when everybody was using Blackberry or Nokia phones. One day, my CEO back then, I was a usual IT guy, okay, came and said, look, I like this phone, uh, which is an iPhone. I want this tomorrow to all my uh, leadership to be given. I'm like, excuse me? Uh, yeah, go buy this phone. I'm like, where did you get this? He said, while I was playing golf, I said to, so, I, I said to God, true story. While he's playing golf, he saw it in his golf friend, he liked the phone, he went and bought one, and came asked me to order and set up everything tomorrow for all his team. Uh, so he needed technology and honestly, that's the first time when I touched the iPhone as well, uh, back then. So uh, I will tell you how I handled them, but uh, of course they, they hear, they see. And what, what you said is, uh, like if I'm today in a board, or cybersecurity professional CISOs are somehow in a board, okay? This is because of hackers. Hold on. Why? How come hackers put us in the board? Remember, when I started 20, 22 years ago, cybersecurity, I mean, yes, 
in company head of CIO over technology people, but security was like, ah, just warm up my computer, put the firewall. Um, <laughs> you know, I remember 20 years ago having two firewalls uh, and the DMZ network, you know, in between was a security measure. Then someone came, ah, what about port 80? It's always open. Ah, yes, of course you can use port 443 to redirect the traffic, but <laughs> port 80 is open. What about launch an attack from there? Perfect. What about TCP IP? <laughs> you know, which is everything is based on TCP IP, right? So what about I use this uh, protocol to connect to computers? What about zero days? What about, what about, what about? What about social engineering? So why I'm coming to this point is, um, the hackers somehow, like, tell me honestly, uh, I can see we have hundreds of people in the webinar. What was cybersecurity 10 years ago? I'm not talking about 15, 20 years ago. Do you remember the word cybersecurity 10 years ago? I'm asking actually. It was security, right? It was ethical hacking, yes. It was, the word was security. But today, cybersecurity is so big. Uh, the word FISO is so big. Honestly, it's a prestige to have this title. Uh, it's so nice. It is taking us to the next level. And this is because, again, 15 years ago, hacking was not in the knees at all. But today, there is no single week that, that there is no news about incident in cybersecurity. It could be ransomware. It could be Trojan, DDoS, you name it. So back to your question in the beginning. It is your job to explain this to the board, to the CEO, to, uh, to the, sorry, to the CEO, to the CFO, in a way they will understand it. As long as you can communicate this, they will always have you next to them because, especially today, tanks. Uh, you know, to COVID-19, we have been enforced to digitally transform. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all saw this at LinkedIn or uh, Twitter. Uh, <laughs> funny that uh, there was a beautiful uh, cartoon saying, who helped you to, who done this digital transformation for you? The CEO, the CIO, CISO, the fourth option was COVID-19. Obviously COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, India, I mean, we, we have uh, more than 20,000 people in India send a chart bank. Again, I'm not talking to the bank, but uh, within one day, our group CISO found a perfect solution to switch from office to, to working from home. I mean, it was not optional. We had to do it because the health of the employees are important more than anything and everything. I mean, forget to send a chart, Microsoft, Apple. Uh, all the technology companies, the technology companies, they did it as well. For them, it was a bit easier. They had the infrastructure, of course. For some of the companies that I know, uh, they struggled. But at the end, we found the way to survive. Saying that, hackers are also finding new ways to survive. Because hacker has, you know, different motivations. And then to reach out these motivations, they will look into the different, different, uh, different. <coughs> excuse me, to different ways to attack your organizations. And this is our job to as CISO security professionals to minimize this. I hope this answered the question. I don't want to talk very, very too much. Absolutely, thanks. Another question, or should I continue with my prepared? Uh, yeah, I think we can continue and questions we will take in the end. Sure. Uh, by the way, uh, I can see we have lovely, lovely uh, more than 100 people. If they go ahead and tweet about the session, okay, uh, I will give one of my ebooks for free. So all what I have to do is uh, tag Elitiso, uh, my name, and uh, maybe a screenshot from the session, tweet in Twitter or in LinkedIn or whatever. And any social platform, as long as we are tagged, we can see, we will give a free ebook. Would, 
let me uh, type my uh, Twitter tag and you can tag yours. I mean, I know it's LEC, so anyway, uh, let's. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and maybe, maybe Alok or Rishi, you can post in our WhatsApp groups as well, uh, that this is the offer by Dr. Erdel. So thank you. All right. Uh, so tag us, uh, tag us, uh, and here we go. And you will, you know, put a screenshot so we know that you were in this session, and we will uh, give uh, ebooks away. All right. Thanks to my publisher. So back to cybersecurity leadership. Again, now you signed the contract. You joined a CISO. What are you going to do? I mean, this is a very popular interview question. Also, what will you do in your first 100 days? First of all, you have to know your strength. I mean, Chen Su, I'm pretty sure you heard about it. He has a book, great book. It's he actually, which I keep reading. The Art of, oops, uh, the background is not allowing me, but uh, it's called The Art of the War. Uh, you see, I have something in my hand, but thanks to the background. Yeah, this is uh, the, the Chinese yeah. uh, warlord, yeah. This book was written 2,500 years ago, and he says in his book, to win a war, you have, to, I'm gonna summarize it, you have to know yourself, but this is not enough. You have to know your enemy, but this is also not enough. You have to also know the attack ground because if you don't know yourself neither your enemy or the attack ground you cannot win the war so first of all know yourself know your organization know your team assess your resources use uh, some metrics <laughs> from um, from iso for example from known uh, from known frameworks Build relationship. Look, I don't know if you noticed this one thing which I did a lot. Build relationship. Uh, honestly, like uh, when you reach out to me, thank you again. I could just say no. Uh, but I said, you know what? Uh, without knowing you, by the way, I reach, I, I get so many. As long as there is a community and there is more than like 10 people is going to, uh, more than hand of people he's going to benefit it i try to give my time because time is very valuable but building this network will help us go to the next level then you have to have a plan again change to in his book says a strategy without knowledge will not take you anywhere then you have to uh, evaluate the team and if you have a team that you work in the past before and if you have the opportunity you can bring them in the other important thing is you have to build trust because cyber security means anything and everything now can i ask a question maybe uh, uh so the first person who is gonna answer this question in the chat will win an ebook no need to tweet do you know Anybody who is not using computer. Your grandma, your mom, for example, you're in India. Okay, Ashish, tell me who. Your mate? So you tell him your mate uh, does is so does your mate have a bank account? Or Babu, no bank account. Does your mate or your mom has an ID? Government ID. Oh, government ID. Can I check this ID in a computer and I find the details of your mom as a government? Maybe your mom doesn't have, a, one person said no, by the way. Kulit Huda, you are winning the book, by the way. We will uh, please reach out to us and we will send you the book. Everybody, everybody somehow in a digital world. I'm pretty sure you read the news. Ah. Oh, 30 million social security numbers in the US were leaked. Or 50 million, uh, real number by the way, uh, Turk citizen number leaked. And one of them was my mom. My mom, she cannot read and write. My mom, she never went to school. My mom doesn't have a phone. We have a home phone. Uh, she, honestly, 
her man, you know, old lady, I'm pretty sure most of you know exactly what I mean. Uh, but I know her ID was leaked. The, the, and uh, the threat actors, I don't know who they were, tried to use my mom's ID to open a bank account. Luckily, the bank noticed that and they blocked it. So without my mom getting involved, she was hacked. And her ID was used to open a fake bank account. Luckily, they did not go ahead and create, get a credit card and start using the money and not pay back. But I'm pretty sure we all read this news, right? So uh, it, we are all digitally connected. And without this, we couldn't survive COVID-19. Uh, people, they were not digitally ready, lost their jobs. Uh, yeah, uh, if you're a bus driver, of course it's different story, please don't get me wrong. Uh, how is the bus driver going to work from home, right? This is a different story, of course, but I'm talking about the modernized jobs. And uh, of course, I feel bad for, like my, my brother in Germany is a bus driver, but luckily he's in Germany and the German government supported him. But I'm pretty sure the same thing does not apply to a bus driver in Turkey or in India. So back to our first 100 days, the trust, remember? It's very important because as I said, cyber security, like, who, again, another question. Who knows the most about you? You, I mean, beside you. If your wife, for example, or your mom, or your phone. Your phone. I assume you have a smartphone, by the way. Or your computer. That, of course, right? Everything is in this. Everything is in this. Everything. Google knows more uh, about your taste than, than you. Because sometimes uh, you Google something, you like something, then you forget about it, but Google will not forget about it. Or uh, Microsoft knows your, your, for example, email habits. Saying that Microsoft is really good on, I don't work on Microsoft anymore, compared to other emails and the three emails and this, uh, on security and privacy. Let's give them the credit. Uh, move. Uh, your bank knows your spending habits better than you. Why? If you have a credit card, you go and you use it. They don't keep it, maybe. I don't know. Each bank is different. Uh, but, you know, these companies, they, I, I actually tweeted the other day a really good chart what companies know about you. So, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to tell is, this, this little uh, thing, which we call a phone, uh, I can, you can see because of the background, will take you to the next level uh, if you don't treat it well. It's like your best friend. You know, if, I'm pretty sure we all have some best friends that we fight, and as soon as you fight, they went out, tell all the secrets, and you lost the connection. This is like your phone. If someone else knows your pin, or your, uh, you know, I have, for example, as Pakistan, with a smiley face, if someone else knows the secret fault that you share your stuff, this can be embarrassing. Or this can be, uh, can you imagine my book? Before I uh, publish it, someone steals it. So there is a trust that you need to put into your vision and communicate it. And don't forget, you might be the CISO, but you need to act as cybersecurity leader. Not act, you should not just demand, you should set the role model. I'm pretty sure you all had a father. I mean, uh, this is a very Indian and Turkish example. They smoke, for example, but if you smoke, they punish you. Why are you smoking? You, should, you know, uh, I mean, when, when I give this example in the US, they look at me, what, punish? But uh, my Indian friends and my, uh, you know, uh, tell me we all had something similar. Like they do it, but you cannot do it. I remember like, I was a very good boy when I was little. Very good boy. You know, you, I told you what I did with my, with my brother's back in school. Very good boy. <laughs> and I used to get uh, lots of love for my, and attention from my father. Uh, I used to do something wrong. Then he said, shut up, don't talk. Or then he, he asked me a question. I used to not talk. He said, why are you not talking? Why are you not answering me? When I answer, why are you talking? You know, what I'm trying to say is, uh, he was not setting the right role model, like, should I talk or not? Uh, my friends, I can see the smiley faces here. 
Um, so back to our topic, we should set the role model. And one big mistake to avoid. Many CISOs, when they start their job, they try to look nice to the board. They try to be nice to their boss. Please, of course, be nice to your boss, to your friend, to whoever. But if you don't understand the needs, if you don't uh, look at 360 angle and create the right relationship, then your legacy will be not ending positively. I mean, uh, of course, there is a different statistic, but most of the CISOs survive three to five years in an organization. Uh, doesn't matter if the CEO loves you or not. Of course, I can tell, for example, for Microsoft CISO, 25 years in the same company. It's different, okay? Uh, but I hope you try, you understand what I'm trying to say. So, uh, once you join, by the way, any questions so far? <coughs> I can see people started to tweet, uh, Anupa uh, and all my friends, you, you're getting your ebooks, and uh, I have also the beautiful screenshots. Kiran, Paul, Asoshi, all will get the ebooks sent to you, okay? Uh, I will give you one, one drive link, promise it's not gonna be fishing at time. Uh, anybody who tweets or uh, put this in social media will get the ebook, so thank you, continue doing this. Any question that should I answer? Sorry, I cannot do all at the same time. Yeah, question at the end. Okay. Dr. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Dr. Adolf, one quick question. Uh, sure. Considering okay. that uh, CISOs are struggling for time right now, right? Uh, right now also, and it's always kind of a story. What are your tips to manage time? And considering that you've written so many books, have you managed such complex jobs, how do you manage your time and what is your recommendation to us? How do I manage time? Uh, I wish I had 25 hours, <laughs> uh, but I don't. So managing time, honestly, uh, again, the background is not showing that. Writing books is good, but I read a lot. Uh, and I read a lot of um, time management books. Uh, I try to, because <laughs> unfortunately, I cannot uh, do everything myself, but uh, I, I I try to, like, if, if I don't have the time to read, I try to listen. Go to YouTube, look at these guys. Like, if you check my um, LinkedIn profile, for, uh, not, not, if you check my uh, Instagram profile, you will see I follow some uh, thought leadership as well. Maybe I cannot watch them for one hour, but I listen that five minutes, try to learn uh, some stuff. I honestly, these days, I start to read a lot of Harvard Business Review books. Uh, and uh, it's really good, so I try to learn from these, and time, look, doesn't matter, even if you have 50 hours, it's not gonna be enough for you. As long as, like, honestly, I don't know if you noticed, like a few minutes ago, I went to my work computer, I put myself into mute mode, so it is important, like at the moment, it's work time for me, okay? My manager knows, but uh, when I feel this time for my work, I give it back, and, you know, try to be fair to, to yourself, to your family, to your loved ones, if you try to be fair, then you will find the ways to, to operate. Like, let's be honest, especially for the ones they say, I don't have enough time. How much time are you spending on your phone? Or how much time, look, uh, you know, on TV. Look, remember, I said, uh, evaluate, three minutes ago, I said, evaluate your organization 360 degrees and try to understand, try to trust, try to, now, evaluate yourself 360, and try, it's like saving money. Uh, if you're a son of, or a god of a rich guy, you don't learn maybe to save that much, but if you have a budget, you have to fit into this budget, otherwise, you're either gonna blow up your credit card, or your reputation. Correct me if I'm wrong. The, 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 the uh, limit, is enforcing like I prefer, I, I, I wish I had a Ferrari, I mean, I don't, but just example. But at the moment, I'm happy with a Tata car because honestly, it does the same thing. The only difference is nobody looks at my Tata. If I had a Ferrari, everybody would look at me. But 
If you can manage your budget, for example, you can survive. The same is with your life. You have uh, 24 hours or, uh, you know, 10,200 10, minutes, I might be wrong, uh, roughly, in a day. If you save five minutes on Facebook, if you save five minutes from TV, if you save five minutes from, let's say, um, you, you know, try to save at least half an hour every day to read, to write. Here we go. Uh, or to sleep less. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure we all sleep minimum four or five hours. Uh, unless we have some friends, they have to work more. And I understand this is India. Many people work under two dollars per day. I respect all these people, okay? But at least for the ones they could attend this webinar, you have the tools and resources. You can do that if you really want. I highlight, if you really want. Look, um, 50 years ago, uh, I mean, uh, one of my most favorite uh, Indian guys is Russell Peters. I'm pretty sure you all know him, uh, Indian Canadian. He makes all these jokes. Or uh, when the British came to India, this was more than 50 years ago, you know, they changed everything. They, they, you know, start to give, they start to get the good out of you. You know, this is all those days. I don't want to go to the politics. But today, what have you done is, uh, in that last 50 years, the CEO of Microsoft, CEO of Google, CEO of Adobe, I can, I can count this more. They're all Indian. Honestly, I'm proud of it. Yes, of course, like in every nation, you have the good, the bad, the... <laughs> And we have uh, non-Indian friends here as well. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not just uh, focusing on India, but uh, you do it actually. But if you like, what I do is I read Satya's book, for example. I try to look at uh, Google CEO's life. How did he do it? And try to learn, try to say from that and implement where possible. And I don't know if you noticed, whatever tip I gave about cybersecurity leadership, applies to life. Honestly, there is no difference for me between cybersecurity and life. I'm not joking. Uh, like COVID-19, it's a virus. <laughs> it is a virus. And uh, if you don't put the hygiene matters, if you don't take care, put a mask, wash your hands, put a social distance, you don't have to. Nobody's forcing you. Yes, the government forced. But unfortunately, the government, uh, sorry, the economy is about to collapse. So it's up to you to follow the rules or not. You follow the rules, you stay healthy. You don't follow the rules, you get the virus, and you suffer two weeks. And I, I hope you will survive, but unfortunately, not everybody is surviving. Does this answer the question? Sorry, I spoke too much, but I hope you understand what I was trying to say. Thank you. No, no, it answers. Thank you. So uh, this is... Matt, uh, if you have a question, please stop me. Um, then you have to identify the key roles. Then again, when you buy a second hand, second hand car, for example, or second hand phone, what will you do is you will check if there is any scratch, you will check the lock history. The same thing applies to the network. Now you've been appointed, I would definitely do full end to end test to see what are the findings? Uh, if there is any previous incidents, if there is uh, any uh, promise to promise made to be delivered, or uh, once you do all this, okay, you, you will understand what the organization is, what the status of the network is, what the risk is. You know, um, when you're hungry and you find the apple tree, will you go to the top of the tree to get the reddest apple? Or in the very first thing, you will get the low-hanging fruit? In most cases, you will get the low-hanging fruit or you're extremely thirsty, you're about to die. You see there is some water, but if you walk another two miles, you're gonna have crystal clear water. Will you walk another two miles? Most probably not, right? You will drink that first water that you find if you're about to die from thirstness, dehydrated. So deliver the low hanging fruit, display, showcase yourself. Then 
Again, build the right team, which will help you to go to the next level. And then um, this will probably finish your first 100 days. Of course, there will be do's and do not do's, but one of, I will give you three do not do's after a very, very short break. So uh, any question about what I said so far? And uh, the rest of the question, please continue typing. I will definitely answer them before we finish the session. Uh, just, because, just, yeah, yeah, just one question from my perspective. So for a CISO, how much do you think that the technical skills are required as well as the leadership skills? So that uh, is, that is, yeah. Very good question. So look, I met non-technical CISOs, great leaders. Uh, they had, you know, they were managing the board so well that probably, uh, so well that I can not even, honestly, they, they, they're businessmen, businesswomen. They, they manage the board, they get what they want. When it comes to technical, they have really good advisors and uh, they follow the advisors. But if you ask me, you should not be a CISO or CIO. Unfortunately, I meet many of them. They're great businessmen, but uh, they don't know how to deliver. Uh, they don't understand. For, I, don't, I don't want them to be a network engineer. I don't want them to build a zero trust network. No, no, no. But what I want them is, when I say zero trust, at least I don't have to tell what zero trust is. Look, I don't really, like, I, I got a PhD, okay? Uh, I'm a doctor. I wrote, like, more than five, 6,000 content, which is uh, sold under my name, okay? But even I know, I don't know, you know, the thing which I know that I don't know everything. I am only better together. So, uh, in my eye, and CIO or CISO should be technical or at least, look, honestly, I used to be really good uh, on penetration testing, growth engineering, but I didn't do this for so many years. I lost my skills. It's like playing music. You could be the best or speaking language. I was not up in Germany. I went all my life to school in Germany. But after 25 years now, I can't speak German perfectly anymore. Yes, I can speak, I understand, but I started to switch so many English words because I don't speak German every day. My brothers, as I said, they are in Germany. My nieces, um, niece, nieces, when I speak German to them, sometimes I use English words. Luckily, they understand it. I lose, but I understand. I hope you know what I'm trying to say. So it's a balance. A teacher should not go and maybe uh, put the cable, which I did 50 years ago, you know, I'm making this number up. But at least if someone tries to trick them, they should understand what's going on. Yep. Does it answer good. the question? Absolutely, it does. So there are uh, a lot of questions coming in. I think there is right, five more have, minutes. So, yes, I have to uh, work as well. Yeah. Let me do the three bad moves. So please, like when this came, I could just say no, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to be a great community. Like now we have uh, close to 100 people all the time. Uh, I didn't know that, and I guess uh, it's been recorded. Yes, I can see the recording sign, and many people are gonna watch it later. Uh, but try to not say no. Yes, honestly, yes, I spoke to my manager. I said, look, I have all this. Uh, I would, don't go just with problems to the board or to your managers. Uh, go with the solution, state the problem, and give the solution, and try to learn, say yes. And I read a great book about this, from Richard Branson, uh, who is the owner of Virgin, Virgin uh, Airlines, Virgin Mobile. Uh, sorry, Richard Branson. If you Google him, he has a book called Screw It, Say, say Yes. So uh, if you know, I mean, of course, it doesn't mean say yes for everything and anything, but evaluate and try to say not no. Second one is, don't offer only one way to secure systems. Don't forget, <laughs> there is many different ways. It's like, think about the villas, the houses with gardens. Like <laughs> in Australia, it's a lot. A one story house, they buy a door which is that thick, okay? Iron door, then I can just break the window and go in. I'm like, <laughs> excuse me, why are you spending all this money to the door? I can just break the window. And 
Don't say it's focused internally for too long. If you don't know what is happening in your neighbor, you cannot, I'm not saying go no inside the house, but if there is a fire in your neighbor and you don't care, the fire might drive to your house and you will care. You don't believe me, look at Australia. The fires happen. You know, if there's a small fire, the government didn't care. After nearly two months, we couldn't, thanks to God, you know, the rain just happened, but we couldn't control the fire in Australia at home, which affected all of us. And the whole world donated money. So try to control things when there's little and be aware. So this brings me, believe it or not, to the end of my presentation anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it before I go to questions. Uh, I rushed it a bit yeah. time spent. Perfect. Uh, if, if everyone happy, I'm happy. Let, let's read some questions and answers. Great. So there's one particular question that I wanted to ask. Uh, it is in the chat by Rina as well. And I hear this question a lot. So what people are saying now, privacy is coming up as a, as a separate domain and all. So there's an overlap between privacy and data security. So for a privacy professional who is non-technical, not into cyber, what certifications and self-reading do you recommend that people should do? So that's the question. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you one ebook for free. Make sure you read it. It's free at least. <laughs> and you, it's going to be one of those, by the way, okay? Uh, certification. I get this question a lot. Look, I wrote certification for Microsoft, for EC Council, for logical operations. Uh, but sometimes people say, oh, hold on, you don't recommend this? Like, certification is important. It's the best way to show you others what you know. When I say certification, please, no matter what you do, please just don't memorize the question and go do the exam because you will fail if not in the first interview, in the fifth interview, in the job. I'm not saying don't look, don't download questions, don't read them, but don't just, if someone asks you which of the colors is blue, A, B, C, D, don't just say D. You know what I mean? Understand the answers that you're giving. Uh, as a beginning certification, EC Council CEH is great. Beginner, it's not advanced. For advanced, SANS is good. For books, there's many great authors. Mark Rosnovich, uh, Bruce Schneider, uh, or, oh, you know, I can give many other different books. Uh, look, for example, I have a PhD in cybersecurity, right? Look, this is a book, uh, can you see it now? Which I just bought. Uh, yes, it's hard, hard business review, cyber security. Hold on, you might say, hold on, are you reading, reading cyber security books? Honestly, yes, and this is like low level. I, I, mean, I finished the book, but you know why I read it? Because this is cyber security for business. And I'm like, yes, may, I know, but let me see if I learn something else. You know, I have a PhD in this. Or look, another book which I just bought. Uh, and. Uh, from Amazon, by the way, uh, I bought the uh, AI. I like this month in CISO magazine. You know the CISO magazine. I wrote a huge article myself. This book has like 50 pages of 100 pages of this itself. But I still buy it to understand the business side. So uh, try to read and understand. So uh, back to your question. Every certification is important as long as there is a future. So please ensure you uh, get EC Council certification, SANS certification, or logical operation certification. Next question, please. I talked too much, yeah. I know. <laughs> no, great this idea. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's a great, great uh, answer. So another very important question is, you are, you are uh, getting into an elevator, you see your CEO is in the elevator, and you are going to the fifth floor, and they're like 20, 30 seconds. And CEO asks, how safe are we? So how do you answer this in 30 seconds uh, while you are in the elevator? Uh, in the elevator, I would prefer not to answer this question. Uh, okay. Assuming uh, there is a camera, some others watching, you know, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> how safe are we? I would tell you, look, safe as necessary. You cannot be 100% secure anymore, but your strategy should be including safe as necessary. In 30 seconds, uh, if there is something that I want, I will tell you, look, I miss a mouse. Without a mouse, I have to use the keypad, which requires lots of time. So I better invest in the mouse 
to save this time, I don't know if you noticed, I stated the problem, I gave the solution, and the mouse is gonna cost $10. Uh, of course, oh, this is not a purchase order to give within the list, but this was just a small, like, it's like, uh, when you go to a shop, you know, it's Carrefour or you name it, uh, what you have in India, I don't know really. Uh, when you go to food court, you have your money. Sometimes you feel like American food, you go to McDonald's. Sometimes you go to Pakistani or uh, Indian food biryani. I don't want to make the fight now perfectly, so both of them are good. <laughs> uh, or uh, you go to Turkish, you eat, uh, you know, I know not everybody is meat, meat, but you might eat doner kebab, you know what I mean? It depends on your budget, on your money. Uh, I would just frame as it needs to be given. Not more, not less. Sometimes giving too much information, oh yeah, we are good, but um, at the moment we are under ATP attack. The, uh, the group uh, AC009 group is attacking us. Uh, they have this uh, Trojan which is specifically built for us and this is creating a back channel to uh, this website with this, uh, no, 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 no. I will tell uh, if, I mean, uh, I hope this is not my first view with the C CEO. Uh, <laughs> probably I would give a political answer or if I really need to give details, I would say, can I get please half an hour of your time? So in the 30 seconds, to give you a briefing on where we are will be the best answer. Great. Please, next Perfect. question. Perfect. Yeah, just last question. Uh, we are almost over the time. So what five metric you would present to board? So you have an annual session with board, let's say or a quarterly session, and you're supposed to present dashboards. So what, what five metrics would you present uh, to show how effective your cybersecurity program is? Uh, remember, actually, I answered this question already. I said uh, the metrics will be, it will depend the first 100 days. Where are we at? Uh, what are we doing currently? What are the problems? And how are we going to overcome these problems in the next midterm and long term? And the board will most probably will look at the budget they gave me, the money I spent. Uh, and the risk that I reduced. And it uh, depends on the sector, if you're banking, the status of regulators. If you are in, um, in um, technology, the status of, you know, I would give the trending bit. It's really, really important. You know, boards, CEOs, businessmen, they like all this flow charts, they like to see with comparison. So I would definitely compare it, saying, look, we are here, but a similar company like us is here. They are better than us because of this. We are better than them because of this. If we do this, we can be here. So give them the information. Like when you speak to a little child and they ask you, Dad, how did I come to this world? Will you give all these details? I don't want you to say the birds bring you in. It's not a 10, 3 years old child. It's like 15 years old child who understands but doesn't know the details. He will give the details as much as he or she needs to know. And I hope uh, they will not ask you this question, but <laughs> if they ask, <laughs> my son is just inside, by the way. Uh, I, you know, I try to frame it in a way that it will not show me stupid, and I will not treat him stupid. I hope this answered the question because we Absolutely. we run out of time. Absolutely. So yeah, thanks, Dr. Ardell. Really appreciate you taking out time and talking to our community. Great insights. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I will publish the recording and uh, share it over social media and then tag you as well. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very everyone. much. Bye. So everybody Thanks else, everybody. don't forget, I'm gonna, uh, I, I got all the tweets. Uh, I'm gonna give you one link uh, thing, or maybe I share it with you. You can share it to everybody who registered. Uh, no, no, not everybody who registered. Everybody who tweeted. <laughs> we will find a way by email, okay? Right. Uh, the, okay the, the, thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.